Well, it's time to grow up. Grow up. Today we're going to talk about growing up. Yep. Clean really? up your room. Clean up your mess. It's funny because you you watch a transition of my granddaughter. I know there's a Bible study. We'll get to it. But as she gets older, then she becomes more responsible for better decisions. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? We, and we we expect more out of them as they get older. Right. It's we don't so expect a two-year-old to clean their room. No, no, not at all. But a 12-year-old, you're like, all right, clean up your room. <laughs> Come on, you're, you're, you're better than that. Anyway, we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14 today. It is a Bible study. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. we got a great show for you today. It's good to see you today. Oh, they're looking so good. If you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from, and don't forget to like and share. And wakeuptv.tv, go there, and real quickly, you can sign up for daily texts. I think our shares should equal our views. And they're not. They I should be. They should be. And here's the other thing. I think our likes should, should match it. This means that there's like 900 people that watch it that don't go, I like it. Just Sometimes this. you just want one of these. It means a lot to Jason. Hey, let's do that. Our goal is, today's show, the likes equal the views. See how close we can get. You go through your day, you work hard all day, and, and nobody really, at the end of the day, gives you one of these. No. That's you know, all you really want. Tell me this, Jason. You come home after, even today, like, you know, the Bible study and the staff, and you walk in the door, and your wife goes, Hey. Uh, what is it? That's it's priceless. Priceless. And you know what? These are free. <laughs> they don't cost us anything to give them out. You can just give these out all day, and you'll never run out of them. And you can Endless. even take it back without the person knowing. You could be like, "Yeah," and then you take it back, but they don't know you took it back. They still <laughs> they still feel like you gave it to them. I think you just need to learn. I think we need to all be better today about giving out these more videos. of these things right here. Yeah, <laughs> our scripture today is going to be in Hebrews uh, five verse fourteen. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, so no more baby food. You're ready for some follow, solid food. Those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Mm. You know, the great life, the way that life that God wants us to have, is a life where we do the right things for the right reasons. Yeah. And we don't do the wrong things. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change heaven. We know that the eternity is secured when we believe in Jesus Christ. But if I want a kingdom life, Jesus is like, this book right here, even Moses said this with the Ten Commandments. He goes, hey, I give this so you can have a great life. Mm -hmm. That's what the commandment's for. Not to lord over you, not to make things hard. And Jesus even said that. He goes, she goes, no, no, no. The, the, you don't work for the rule. The rule's supposed to work for you. Yeah. He's like, just if you'll do this, if you'll love your neighbor, if you'll let go, of, and if you'll forgive, if you'll be nice, if you'll encourage people, if you'll honor capture your, your thoughts, parents. if you honor your parents, right? If you work hard and give excellence to everything, mm -hmm. he's like, goodness will be drawn to you. Yeah. And and I think far too often we, we're we withholding uh, goodness or, or we're not doing the things that we know we should. That they're easy to. They're easy to know what to do right and wrong is is simple. And and so if you're if you're having to be told again and again, hey, you need to need to forgive, then you're still drinking milk. Right. Like we should know this by now because God forgave you. God says, I, I no longer count a man's sin against him. So why are we counting sin? And so right. Hebrews is kind of calling us up a level. And I, I think that we all need to be called up a level sometimes. It's no no one's above this conversation. Uh all of us sometimes need to be told, hey, grow up a little bit. Like you're better than that. <laughs> right. And I think that's the conversation is like, um, you know, I don't ask, I, I mentioned this before, I don't ask my two-year-old to take out the trash. I don't have a two-year-old either. So I have I could, a granddaughter I don't too. ask my grandbaby to take out the trash. My granddaughter does nothing. I work for her. I'm her full-time. <laughs> I had her yesterday and I was a full-time employee. I literally work. It's going to be an Easter story. I worked yeah. for four, and she's the meanest boss I've ever had. She's great. <laughs> I enjoy her. I love her, but she's on me. She just wanted some ramen soup. And for hours... <laughs> Yeah. She was on me. You, you know, when we first get born again, maybe we're in lack in a lot of ways and we need, we need, we need, we need to be right. bottle fed. Right. That's okay. God's okay with that. But there comes a point in your Christianity where you can't be needy. Now you become the giver. I'm uh, blessed to be a blessing. I'm uh, no longer the discipled. I'm the discipler. I've grown to a position in my life that, that I'm no longer asking for everything, but I'm giving as much as I can. I like that. I'm giving love. I'm giving kindness. I, I'm not needing my cup filled. Here, fill my cup. Will you love me? Will you? <laughs> and nice. When you first get born again, you you should be like that. Right. You are needy. Right. You do need support. You do need people to help you. You need people to stand with you. But as you get older and you more mature, you become the sort of person that's a giver. 
in our Alpha Male Conference, um, I think I, I'm, we're, we're, we're teaching together, but working the scripture in there, that when I was a child, I, I did childish things. Yeah. But when I became a man, I put those things away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I was a child, yeah, I was selfish. When I was a child, I didn't want to share. When I was a, a child, I was about taking. But now I'm a man. So as a man, what do I do now? I lay my life down for others, right? I uh, give to others. I'm an encourager. I build up. Yeah, when I was a child, I made fun of you, you know, in the fourth grade. Find out something because people made fun of me. But now I'm different. I do. I put those childish things away. And what you said about uh, telling yourself, grow up. In a way, I kind of do that. I, and I'm, I, I do it in everything. So pickleball, when I make now, I play a lot of pickleball. When I make a mistake, I'm like, be better. I like to do that. But I do that in my marriage. But your first day playing pickleball, I didn't. I didn't say that ever. You had a lot of grace for yourself, right? You're like, well, no. I'm brand new at this. I'm yeah, just no, I, I never said be I'm better. I'm drinking milk right I'm, now. I would say I'm going to be better, <laughs> but don't be better. And I do that now, like in marriage. Like, yeah, on Saturday, I don't know why I was just grumpy, and I went blah blah blah. And then uh, I was like, "Whoa, you're grumpy." And then later, I I go, "Can you be better than that?" Mm -hmm. Well, stop it. You yeah, what are you 54 years old and you're big baby? Stop being a big baby. Be be happier. Be more encouraged. Be more. Have a better attitude. Yeah. And I, I think self talk is very powerful when you say, "Come on, Scott. I know. I everyone watching. This is funny to me when people go, you know, Pastor, you need to preach on sin.'" And I go, "I think everybody listening pretty much knows right and wrong. They should. And pretty much for the most part. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? People are like, "Yeah, I know. I can look and go. Well, that's right. And I know that's wrong. I I do. You know. No one's like now. So cocaine. Real quickly. Is that good or bad?" No, just I just real I just want to know real quickly if you can tell me they're offering it to me. Anything that tries to control you is bad. Okay, so so hating them is that good or bad, Jason? That's bad. Okay, we want to be good. <laughs> want to love people, love your enemy, pray for those who persecute. I punched him in the face, but I didn't know. Uh, probably bad. Okay, unless so, you're defending your home from uh, exactly. you know a robber or something, then you can shoot him in the face. Well, I'm talking bad about Sally at the office, and something in my spirit made me feel like that was guilty when well, I walked away. Well, you bring up a good thing when you say something in my spirit, because um, the the Holy Spirit like was was sometimes will sometimes we will use the Holy Spirit or God as an excuse to do the wrong thing. Come on, yes, there you have it. So Jesus said this, he said, you're using the traditions of men to make the word of God of no effect. He was talking to the Pharisees. Right. They were The traditions of men here was defined as, we. I want to give a gift to God, so I can't I can't help my parents financially. And Jesus is like, mm. you're, wait, who told you to give a gift to God? He, he calls that a tradition of men that they heard from God to give to God. Right. But God's like, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't tell you to, to take from your parents to give to God. Because this, the command is honor your parents and right. we honor the Lord with our wealth. So honor your parents with your wealth too. You should be givers towards your parents. And, and the traditions of men made the word of God of no effect means that I'm not doing what God says because I think God told me something that accepts me from mm. the rule. I have an exception. So, so for instance, I feel like uh, God's telling me not to go to church right now. <laughs> okay. But he said, but do he, not forsake the gathering. He, he wouldn't do that because he already spoke into existence, do not right. forsake the gathering. And he wouldn't contradict his word. The Holy Spirit would never do that. Now you are hearing that voice. It's just not God. This is not God's voice. So knowing right and wrong is like the idea of milk. So in other words, I might say, well, I don't go to church because of the people. And then this, this scripture is saying to you, grow up. Mm -hmm. That's what it's saying. I'm not saying that because I, I love you right where you are. But the scripture is <laughs> saying, Bible's saying, <laughs> it's saying, grow up. Yeah, yeah, people are bad, but you should still, you should still be Lord obedient to God. Don't use... Some don't use something to accept you from the word of God. Well, you know what? Uh, you know, as the husband here, that God God told me that I just need to take about a year and not work. Okay, and I've heard actually, I've heard, I've that, heard that many times. I've heard that many times in my thing, and I just go, well, the Bible did say that if you don't work, you don't eat. So if yeah. you're okay with not eating, and Paul gave us a great example. He was in full time ministry, and he still worked as right. a tent maker to make ends meet. Right. And so, what are you gonna do with that? But he, well, I'm just, Pastor, I'm just, somebody told me that. He goes, well, I just need a season, about a year, and I'm just going to really focus on getting close to God. And I go, well, here's the interesting thing. You could work 40 hours, even 50 hours, and don't watch any Netflix, don't watch any television, and you still have a crazy amount of time to get close to God. Yeah. Incredible amount. You work eight hours, you got hour drive time, you got nine hours, and if you sleep eight hours, that's 17 hours, you still have eight full hours, well, seven full hours. And if, and if you want to get close to God, love your family. <laughs> Thank like, you, Jason. Seriously, spend time with your kids, spend time with your wife. Listen to the that's, Bible on the way to work. That's how you get close to God, is, is, is the people that we're, we're called to love. Pray that's to God while you're working. Our, yeah. 
It's how we imitate the Lord. But we but we we try to justify what we know in our spirit is wrong by justifying it that God told us to make it right when God wouldn't have us do something, right? It's a tough word today. Grow up. <laughs> grow up. It's a tough word today, and and I and I say it to myself sometimes. You know, Jason, grow up. I say it all the time. Like, oh, your your Might feelings be are better. Oh, I'm I'm so hurt. My feelings are so hurt. It wrecked my day. What they said about me. Grow up, man. Yeah. Give me a be bigger than that. Joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you want to win in this life, get happy. Have a great attitude. A great attitude will attract the right things into your life. A bad attitude will repel the right things from you. Right. And work hard at just being better. I know it's hard, but it just brings a better life. And you're like, we give a reasons. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I can't let it go past because of, you know, what they did. And, and, and you can list it out. And, and on paper, it makes sense. But then on this paper, Mm -hmm. Guys, like, no, if because what you're not seeing is the effect that's going to have on your life in 10 years, 15, 20 years. Everything that God put in the Word of God is to make you have a better life. It is. So to love your enemy, to forgive, to be kind, to encourage, to build people up, to give your best, to work hard, to come home to your home and your family, to to really pour into your children, to pour into your spouse. To give and to, to, to give and to give husband, and to give. To love and to your give wife. And to give and to give. And you just, it's just give. Give, 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 give. You're like, Pastor, that sounds like a hard life, but it's your best life. I love it's I, a better life. The best life you can It'll live produce for you. is a life uh designed about others. But doesn't was, God want me to be happy? I'm doing this because I think God wants me to be happy. Well, he does want you to be happy, but if you'll do it his way, you'll be happier than you think you're gonna be. A psychologist you, came, you didn't know. You didn't know. You you make the choice to to choose happiness over God's word, not knowing that God's like, no, 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 this is how you'll become happy. This is a better way. You're gonna. I'm gonna surprise you with how much more happy you will be if you will follow this. I had a, a psychologist was talking uh, when I love uh, came up on TikTok and he was talking about the worst thing that you can do when you're feeling down is continue to make life about you. He goes, the reason why you're down is because you're trying to make everything about you. So the more about me I have, the more down I feel, and it keeps you in a spiral. He goes, the best thing that you can ever do when you start feeling down and unhappy is make things about others. Wow. How do I make other people happy? How do I make other people have a great yeah. day? How do I, he goes, it is the only thing he goes clinically, the only thing that's ever been, he's how he always talks, he's the only thing that's ever been proven to get somebody out of depression and unhappiness is simply to make life about other people. Wow. And I went, yeah, that's biblical. That's biblical. It's it really biblical. Is. So yeah. maybe you aren't feeling happy and maybe you're not feeling your best emotionally. Try. I say try it. Why, uh, why not try it? Yeah. Try making today all about everybody else, everything you do. And it was crazy how God's word works. You find yourself with more energy. Mm -hmm. You find yourself with uh, wanting to do more. You find yourself like, because the Bible does, is not void. It won't come back void. He says, if you give it, I'll give it to you, press down, shaken together. If I give Jason joy, God gives me joy. Anyway, I know what Jesus going always calls people higher. So right. he goes to the crippled man at the pool of Bethesda, who'd been crippled for 38 years. And he said to him, remember, he said, you want to get better. And then he says, get up, pick up your mat and walk. So he's always calling people to get up. You know, we want to help people down. We want to coddle people when they're down. And we want to be coddled and helped when we're down. Right. But Jesus is like, you can get up, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And, and you know, it's an interesting idea that Jesus is calling us out of not just out of our our mess, but out of our victimhood, right? Because pick up your mat means I'm not gonna I'm not gonna carry your mat for you. You can carry your mat. I'm not gonna carry your load. You can carry your load. Now it wasn't an unreasonable load when it comes to the unreasonable burdens that this life sometimes offers. Right. Jesus, is like, give me your burdens, cast your cares right. upon me because I care for you. But you can carry your mat. And and so today's message was was a message of grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I keep saying, grow up. Be don't, better. Don't unsubscribe. But don't grow unsubscribe. Up. <laughs> Come on, we're better than this. Be better tomorrow than you are today. Mm -hmm. And be better than, and it doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Just a little better tomorrow than you are today. A little bit better of a husband, a little bit better of a father. And you're like, well, what does that do? Well, in 365 days, that's a whole lot of distance away from where you were last year. Yeah. Imagine if you've been doing that for 10 years, do it for 20 years. I'm telling you, it's a secret to a great, happy, successful life. Uh, we encourage you. I know you are blessed today. 
partner with us. Allow us to get this message out there. We can do that with your gifts. Might be five, 10, 20, $100, whatever God puts on your heart, but every bit helps. It's simple and easy to give. Um, I think they go to wakeuptv.tv if you want to, right? Yeah, I think so. It's going to be on the screen. You put it on the screen? Correct. Gene right. puts it on the screen. There it is. It's right there. Right? No, no, it's right over here. It's right over there. Right. My bad. You want to pray for him? Yeah. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this message that you're bringing us today. And Lord, that you're helping us to see those places in our life where we could grow up. You're helping us to see clear, more clearly about right and wrong, and that we might not be infants uh, always stuck on milk, but Lord, that we're ready for some solid food. We're ready to step deeper into your kingdom and deeper into advancing your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Watch this clip. Or how can we help Booker take his naps better? And uh, so I just <laughs> am a learner. I just went and went and went. And what I learned is that um, our bodies need to produce a chemical called melatonin in order to help us to sleep. But babies, they're so new that this chemical isn't something that they can produce very regularly. It's something that we as parents, we have to really help them out. We have to get them calm, we have to get them cozy, we have to get them in this rhythm so that they'll produce that hormone so that they can go to sleep. And what's crazy about babies is if you don't get them to sleep in the time that they need to sleep, then they actually flip into this, what's called an overtired state, where <laughs> instead of producing melatonin, the sleep chemical, they start to produce cortisol and adrenaline, which does the very opposite. It keeps them awake. Their body says, well, I'm not asleep yet, so I guess it's time to be awake. And many parents, <laughs> in fact, I'm sure all parents, have experienced their crying, screaming baby in their arms, and knowing that you're just crying because you're tired. You're just crying because you need to sleep. And in fact, the very thing you're doing right now, crying and screaming in my arms, is the very thing that was keeping you from getting the rest that you need. If you would just sleep, then you would get so much better. Is there any other parents out there? Or is it just me? Is that just a me problem? I don't know. <laughs> right? And so I wondered, <laughs> as I was holding Booker one night and he was crying and I was trying to get him to sleep, and I wondered, is there times in our life when maybe we do the same thing? Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, be in church.